Clap your hands to Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. The Holy Ghost is in here today. Whatever you need from the Lord, you receive it. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Ooh, praise God, praise God. Isn't it good to be in the house of God today? Amen. Thank the Lord for his presence that's so rich and real in this place. Amen. To all of our guests, thank you for being with us today. Welcome to our family. Amen. We're so glad you're here. We want you to feel comfortable and worship the Lord together with us. We're family. Amen. It's a good thing to be a part of the family of God. Amen. Tuesday night, Tuesday night, revival service. Brother Phillips will be back with us. Amen. Seven o'clock. And then on Thursday night, we're going to have family prayer here at the church. Amen. I'm asking you that you'd come on Thursday night at 7 o'clock from 7 to 8 for prayer. And then next Sunday back in revival again. And we're going to have a Sunday night service next week. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. So. We're going to keep our Sunday morning service the same. It'll be 11 o'clock the next Sunday night at 6.30. Amen. We're going to be back in church. It's the first time we've had a Sunday night service, I think, since March. We're liable to dance the carpet off the floor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So next Sunday night, amen. We're going to have revival. Phillips will be back. Brother, Sister Phillips will be back with us next week. Amen. Aren't you excited about what the Lord is doing? Amen. Nothing like living for Jesus. Nothing like living for Jesus. Praise God. Brother Phillips, we want you to come this morning, take your liberty or this afternoon, preach to us whatever God's put on your heart. God bless you. Bless you. Come on, let's give it unto the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. You know, expectation is something that is so phenomenal. You know, when you sit down on a ride, when you sit down on a ride in a theme park, and it takes off like a rocket, there is an expectation of what's about to happen. You know, any second this thing is fitting, it's gone. But the expectation and the anticipation of it, God, is this it? Is this it? Is this it? Is this going to be the service that I'm going to get my miracle? Is this going to be the service that I'm going to get my blessing? Is this going to be the service that I'm going to see my family come in and get the Holy Ghost? Is this going to be the service, come on, that we're going to get a breakthrough that we've been praying for? expectation begins to carry us to another dimension in God because it does something that nothing else can do. It prepares you. It's a precursor for what's coming. Sis, lift your hands for me. You're standing right by the rail. It's like a seed that you've dropped. And you said, God win, God win, God wins. this thing gonna happen. I see it busting open, sis, and I see it beginning to take root. It's like that it's not doing anything, but the roots going down. Just because it hadn't come above the ground yet, sis, don't mean that it ain't growing. It's putting down the root system. In the name of Jesus Christ, I do thank you, Lord. Sis, you're about to see the fruit of it. It's about to bust through the ground. In the name of Jesus Christ, I do thank you, Lord. Ha Hallelujah, Jesus. It's been a long battle. It's been a long season. But the seed's coming up, sis. The seed is coming up. Hallelujah, 
Jesus. Psalm 62 and verse 5. It's an honor to be here with you again. I, 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 I count it an honor and a privilege to be in the house of the Lord. And man, you know, this is just, this is just better than peanut butter, ain't it? Come on, this is just good stuff. Look, you can't get this at Walmart. You can't get this online shopping. Look at your neighbor and say, do you feel that? You know what that is? There's an expectation of an explosion that is about to take place. In order for us to endure the impact, we've got to endure the crash. Psalm 62 and verse 5. My soul, wait thou only upon God, for my expectation is from him. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my deliverer. I shall not be moved. In God is my salvation and my glory, and the rock of my strength and refuge is in God. I want to talk to us a little while today about expectation. What's coming next? God begins to do something right on in the house of God. Hey, look, there is something that is on the door that says apostolic. So we got to be exactly what, what we are. Why do we want to let somebody down? We're known for our worship. We're known for our exuberant worship. But there's something about Jesus. Come on, there's something about Jesus. When he shows up, everything changes. Come on, there is an expectation that God is going to work the miracle, that he's turning everything around. Come on, God is going to do exploits with you and through you. Come on, you can be seated, okay? Hey, uh, expectation is a manifestation of what you've been waiting for. It's like riding with Jacob, my, my son. He picked me up one morning and he said, Dad, have you prayed today? I said, sure. And man, we, we was coming down the road and look, we come through the ditch in a $55,000 truck. I said, son, I will knock you through that windshield. He said, Daddy, that's my preacher cuss test you passed. Come on. Why do we allow, allow things to catch us off guard? Come on. Things jump out at us, and we are not expecting it. Like what you've been praying for, and it seemed like that it's not coming. And all of a sudden, right in the midst of everything you are going through, it just shows up. You need the miracle. You need the blessing. Even though you didn't feel the touch, you went back to the doctor and then done another x-ray and they said the cancer is gone. Yeah. Expectation is what we've been praying for. It is the manifestation of what we've been waiting for for so long. We've been waiting for God to show up and do the impossible. There was a man in, there was a man in Lula, Georgia, and his name was Wiley. Wiley, uh, hello, Jesus, my mind. Anyway, you know, it's called some timers, okay? But the Lord told him, he said, if you go on a 40-day fast, I'll do this. And then he said, in the middle, coming off that 40-day fast, and the Holy Ghost began to talk to him, and he said, God, you, you said if I go on a 40-day fast, you, uh, you do this. What will you do if I sacrifice another one to you? Two weeks later, he turned around almost back, 
back, back to back and went on another 40-day fast. And in the middle of the second 40-day fast, a man come into the church. He had had knee surgery, and it was completely titanium. The knee was gone. There was no bone. And he said, Brother Wiley, my knee is killing me. Will, will you pray for me? And he prayed for him. And he said, Pastor, he said, Sir, my knee is not hurting. And he said, Take off that brace. And he danced all the way across the stage. And he said, My God, man, I'm not hurting. What just happened? He said, God has healed you. He went back to his doctor, and his doctor said, What are you doing with that brace off? I've got to do another x ray. You have messed something. You, you messed something up. And the doctor and the surgeon, he called everybody in and said, you got to come see this. Here is the x-ray to where it's titanium, but it's no longer titanium, it's bone. Come on, folks. Whenever we create the atmosphere, anything can happen. When we come to the house of God with an expectation, anything is going to take place. Miracles and signs and wonders. People getting the Holy Ghost. And the world says it can happen, but according to God, One man said, Bro, Brother Phillips, how fast do you pull your tra uh, trailer? I said, it's a trailer. I'll pull it 100 mile an hour if I can. He said, dude, you're, uh, you're crazy. I said, no, I just like it. God will put you into the place to where that expectation will catch you very suddenly. He will put you in a place to where the need, that's all you can see, but you cannot see the hand of God that is supplying the need. Expectation is, is the dimension of believing. Expectation is the dimension of faith. And expectation is that dimension of knowing. So once we can come into the house of God, anything is Anything can happen at any given moment. Whether you know it or not, right in the very climax, and when everybody was singing, there was an angel that stepped right in the very center of the building. I seen him when he stepped in. When you look up the color amber, it means strength. God began to strengthen some of you right in the very minute that the service began the climax. The angel stepped in, and I felt a strength that run through the congregation. Come on, I felt a strength that run through this body. Some of you here, you've been battling. You've been dealing with some junk. You've been dealing with some problem. Come on, and God, and God, and God, and God. There is an expectation that Jesus, he is working a miracle. Come on, he is doing it. He is loosening you. He is setting you free. He is setting your mind free. He's setting your family free. That is what Jesus is doing. <laughs> Expectation has been and always will be the birthplace of the miraculous. Always. <laughs> And some folks think it can't happen. The reason why they think that it can't happen is because they don't want it to happen. The reason why some don't want to be healed is because they get sympathy out of not being healed. Come on, they, uh, they get attention because of what's going on in their life. Instead of the miracle coming in and setting them free to where they can lift up their hands and just worship the Lord, yet they are satisfied where they are. And that is why Jesus didn't touch everybody. Matthew 9, the woman with the issue of blood, she said this, if I may but touch the hem of his garment. She didn't say that he had to touch me, the preacher had to anoint me with oil. 
He's just coming by. I just want to touch him. I don't care what's happening. If you're not going to touch him, excuse me, I am. Because I need something today. Jesus is walking and everybody's coming by. And then Jesus said, ah, somebody touched me. And can you see every disciple going, who? Jesus said, because I felt virtue. Come on, I felt virtue. And then he looked around and, and then here was the woman. She was, she was down and she knew within herself she was healed. There was about four men in this building. You said, God, if you will bless me, I will pour out e even greater, run on into the things of God. I know where you're sitting at. If you'll jump up and run around this house, come on, God will begin to pour out the supernatural blessing. Come on, you ain't waiting on me. Come on, chop, chop. Hello? <laughs> Say, he said. Let me tell you what is about to happen. Come on, you're not expecting it. Your bank account is going to grow. Everything is turning. God is moving out of the ordinary. You watch him do it. I see investments and investments that is going to render right. Expectation must work between the believer and the speaker. Because in the words that are spoken and in the faith in that believer, there was a collision of the miraculous. She just heard he was coming. Big deal, Jesus is coming. Big deal. He's coming. What's going on? That old sister in the brown shawl, come on, look at me. It's going to turn. God's turning this thing for you. I see family, and I see family, sis. Things are coming into repentance. You watch what the Holy Ghost does. Come on, girl, you prayed, you prayed, you prayed, you prayed, you prayed, and you prayed, and now God is turning it around. Come on, ha ha. See, here is what is so amazing about God. You will pass somebody every day, but one day somebody catches your eye. God, what are they doing here? Hey, look on us. Expecting to receive something, but he left with a miracle. Come on, he left with something. There, there are some of you in this building. You were dancing a while ago. You were shouting a while ago. You are leaving with something you didn't come in with. Come on, you are leaving with a string. You are leaving with a blessing. You are leaving with. You are leaving with that dominion that God He promised you. Come on, you are leaving with that dominion. Pastor, I've been dealing with this. Pastor, I've been dealing with finance. Pastor, I've, come on, God. God is turning it around. Here is the one that we think that he don't do it. Because sometimes words that are spoken and they take such a long time. Here is why. When God speaks a word into your spirit, go back to Genesis. God begins to take it. His void has no light to it. But the more you pray, the more light begins to grow. See, because God is not going to bless you above what you can handle. He's not going to do it. Sis is changing very shortly. 
There's a spirit, and it's called fear. Read it, there's two, and it's called doubt. And they work together, and they work together, and they work together, and they're pulling on you, and they're weighing on you, sis, and this is going to melt off of you, and it's going to come off of you in the name of Jesus Christ. Sis, there was a healing coming into the pit of your stomach. And God is healing your digestive system. Right in the name of Jesus Christ, I do thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes! Yes! yes. There has been a wall, sis. There has been a wall, and this thing is standing between you and God. And I see you jumping, and at times, you get to look all over the wall. Sis, it's time to tear down the bricks. Come on, it's time to tear down the bricks. God, I'm coming through this wall. I'm coming to you, Jesus. I'm not staying where I'm at, God. I'm going to walk in the power of the Holy Ghost. I'm going to walk. I'm going to walk in the power of Jesus' name. Coming down through your hips, sir. He needs to touch your body in the name of Jesus Christ. I see you jumping as a young man, playing ball and just carrying on. And God, sir, and there was a damage come down in your left side. And God's going to touch that left side in the name of Jesus Christ. I do thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. See, I love what Elijah says. He just messes everything up. I like him. He throws a wrench in the cog. Okay, that's comfortable language. Okay, it's meaning everything stopped. For First Kings 18 and verse 41. And Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up, eat and drink, for there is the sound of the abundance of rain. You don't see it yet. I hear it. Let me tell you what I heard this morning up praying, Sister Smith. Man, I heard chains rattling. I said, my land, I wish some people next door would be quiet. And I said, wait a minute, God, nobody's up. I heard chains, they were rattling. And I said, God, what is this? He said, this is that angel that is threatening that spirit that is trying to come against this church. And he says, I've got to chain." It ain't over yet. The best is yet to come. There are some of you in here, you've been baffling. Come on, you've been baffled right by this spirit. It has tried to confuse you. God is going to shackle this thing. It has hindered some of you. It has stopped some of you. It has paralyzed some of you. It will not paralyze you anymore. I said, God. Every time I pray, I say, Lord, I thank you, Jesus. I'm rattled. Then he took me up and he peeled back the very center of the building. He peeled it back. And he said, look. I said, God, what am I seeing? He said, look. I could see angels as they was coming. There was a line in the walls. And I said, God, what am I seeing? He said, I'm sending my angel. This morning, when that dude, when he stepped in the center of the building, his sword, the bluest of the blue handle, the blade was bright red. And the blade was out of the sheath, and he was standing in the middle. And this is what he said, I didn't come alone. Come on, folks. What, if one angel can slay 185,000, what about two? Mm. 
He said, I didn't come alone. I come to do battle on the behalf of this man of God and this woman of God in this building. He Sir, if you'll walk with God, he'll make you one of the greatest fishermen of men you've ever seen. Come on, but you got to walk with God. Come on, you got to walk with God. In the name of Jesus, I do thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Jesus. Come on, thank you, Lord. I thank you, Jesus. Come on, sir, look at me. I see one dealer, I see two dealers, and I see three dealers, sir. And I see them go down in the name of Jesus Christ in the water. Come on, God, because of you, because of you. Come on, sir, because of you. He told Here is what is so amazing about God is that God will fill you with the Holy Ghost. He will bring you out and send you right back to reach somebody just like you. Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank God for praying mamas. Thank God for praying wives. Thank, thank God for praying grandmothers. the crazy thing about God is that he don't go for the best. He goes for the worst and he makes them the best. Such for some of you. Come on, but I've been washed. Hello, sister in the green. If you'll step out in the aisle, you Yes, ma'am. If you'll let your feet get light in a praise, there was a situation. He got there's a financial situation. Says, he, "Come on, he's gonna take care of this thing." Huh? Come on, girl, you've been worrying and worrying and well, come on, don't worry, don't worry, praise him. Hello, sir, you with you the purple tie. Lift your hands for me, sir. You are a people magnet, sir. I see you reaching and reaching for young people. I see you reaching for elders. Come on, God is going to fill your hands, sir. Come on, he's going to fill your hands in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, you pastor just said it. The hand of God is on you. He's on you for good and not evil. That is why you're fighting hell. God, how am I how am I going to know the boy you working with now? Sure, he'll be baptized shortly. You watch and see. Ha ha. Come on. You can never fulfill the full potential of what God has for you. Never do it with the mentality that says I'm a victim. You will never do it. Come on, it's somebody else's fault that I'm here. It's somebody else's fault that I'm in this situation. Until you look at you in the mirror and say, hey old boy, look, I don't, see, I, I, see y'all not like me, okay, because I talk to myself. 
Because sometimes, Pastor, I just need expert advice. I really do. That's why I talk to myself. And my wife talks to myself. Hallelujah, Lord. The depression says it's got to lift. The voidness that has been there for so long. Jesus is wanting to feel the voidness in you. The things that have been so rough, that's been so tough, just to get through the day, God wants to feel the voidness. Sister, will you go pray for for me, please? Come on, sis. God wants to feel the voidness because Calvary... God did not mean for us, says he didn't mean for us to carry anything beyond Calvary. Come on, Jesus. Today, God, today, today, Lord, as she makes that decision, Lord, I, God, I'm going to live for you in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm letting go of the past. I'm letting go of every situation, God. In the name of Jesus, I do thank you, Lord. I do thank you, Lord. It's going to work and it's going to turn and it's going to break. It is breaking. The pressure that's been right here, sis, is breaking. The battle that's been right here. Come on, sis, it's breaking. Everything that's been trying to weigh you down here is breaking and it's coming off. There'll be a freshness. Come on, sis, there'll be a freshness of thinking. There'll be a different way of thinking. In the name of Jesus, I do thank you, Lord. Yes, God, yes, God, yes, God. Come on, you can be seated. Hello, sir, come on, stand on your feet for me, please. Coming from the base of your, uh, coming from the base of your skull, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, the ninth vertebra coming down, sir. I see him touching your backbone, God, in the name of Jesus Christ. I do thank you, Lord. Ah, God, heal my brother, Lord, completely in the name of Jesus. Let him not hurt no more. When, when we had our motor home, we had a little cubby hole that, 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 that we stuck all my wife's shoes in, and it was on my side of the bed. And and got up one morning and I drank a whole bunch of tea one night and, and come on, you know what nature and and so I, one of the high heels was turned upside down and 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 man I jumped out of bed and my foot hit the heel. My wife said, My God, you gonna wake up the house. I said, Let me hit you in the foot with this thing. I said that to say this. Hey man. It shouldn't be your wife's voice that's waking up everybody praying. It should be yours. See, I learned how to pray in a woman's prayer meeting. I don't know about you. Look, you put women together and tell them to pray in five minutes, somebody's laid out. You put men together and tell them to pray in 10 minutes, they're talking about hunting. Come on, I'm honest. Amen. Hello, sis and a, a gray and black. Come on, stand your feet for me, please. See, three, six, nine, twelve, sixteen, about twenty-one, twenty-nine, about forty-one days. Sis is going to change the situation for you. It is going to change. God is going to change it completely. Right in the name of Jesus Christ, I do thank you, Lord. Come on. Come on, sister, look at me. The finances and finances, come on, he's changing this. (laughs) 
I see a stamped thing saying approved. Boom. I don't know how he's going to do it. Sis, come on, I'm not God. I'm just telling you what I see in the Holy Ghost. Come on, God. Boom. Come on, he's going to stamp this thing. Let him do it, sis. Come on, let him. Go ahead, girl. Go ahead. In the name of Jesus, I do thank you, Lord. Man, you put up a pretty good race until you run out of battery, wouldn't you? Here's what's going to happen. Is you're going to keep praying just like you've been praying. And he's going to show up. You've been asking him to show up over. God, show up. God, come on, God, show up. Come on, God, show up. Lord, I need you to to do this in our neighborhood. Come on, God, show up. Come on, God, show up. Sir, I see the angel of the Lord breaking through the atmosphere for you. Because of your prayers. There has been some that has been telling you, you might as well quit going to church. You might as well. No, sir. I will not quit. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep praying. Hey, and if God turns your world upside down, he turns your world upside down. Come on, sir, look at me. The one that's been ridiculing you, the one that's been picking at you, God is bringing him to his knees. Hallelujah, Jesus. I'm trying to hurry, okay? Look, this fat boy's tired. Isaiah 55 and 11 says, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void. What are you saying, God? It's going to accomplish everything that Jesus Christ said that it is going to accomplish. Whenever he makes you a promise that God is going to bless you and he's going to heal you, guess exactly, that is exactly what he is going to do. No matter what kind of devil is trying to stop it, no matter what kind of problem is trying to hinder it, come on, I've got an expectation that God is going to do exactly what he said he would do. He's not slack concerning his promises as some men count slackness. God accomplishes everything that he says. John 5, the man that laid by the pool of Bethesda, Jesus knew that he'd been there for a long time. And then Jesus said, wilt thou may be made whole? Hmm. Jesus got an earful. I've been here for so long. God, every time I go to get up, somebody else gets in the water. It's somebody else's fault that I'm here. We can never have victory and an expectation with a victim mentality. Come on, you got to own it. You got to own it. And they said, Jesus said, get up. Heard enough of your sob story. Get up. See, as you were singing just a minute ago, I seen a hand, and it come down to the very center of your back, and sis began to touch you in the back as it come down out of the choir. In the name of Jesus Christ, sis, you were singing. I was watching your lungs, and the Holy Ghost said, I'm going to touch your lungs, and they're not going to burn. In the name of Jesus Christ, I do thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus, I do thank you, Lord.
She coming to church. It's like opening up a box of Cracker Jacks. There's a prize in every box. Really is. I'm going to get carnal for a minute, okay? Just stay with me. Here is some of our expectation. Two men was watching a John Wayne movie. And this guy said, I bet you when he rides under that limb, it's going to knock him off. Guy said, deal. He rode under the limb and it knocked him off. And the guy said, see, I didn't seen it twice and I knew what was going to happen. And the other guy said, yep, I didn't seen it four times, but I thought for sure that he would duck this time. <laughs> here, here is our mentality of going through some things because we already in the same place, in the same place, going in the same circles, dealing with the same problems. We know about what is about to happen. That is why it says in the book, of, uh, there in the book of Deuteronomy, you have compassed this mountain long enough. Come on, you know what's going to happen. You know what's going to happen. You are dealing with the same problem. You are dealing with the same junk. You're dealing with the same attitude. Come on, church. You are dealing with the same financial problem. Well, you know why? Because you find yourself right back in the same place every year. And, and, and it comes to where we are expecting the same thing. Until two men showed up. Get up. We can get so familiar with the things of God that we can become lost in the house. And we can become lost in a familiar place. But when we can let go and let God, our expectation has got to go beyond what our faith can see. Our expectation has got to reach through the cloud and get a hold of something that we cannot even see. Expectation is reaching up and getting a hold of nothing and holding on until it becomes something. Expectation says, God, I'm going to believe you regardless of what everybody else is saying. Expectation says, God, I have planted, I have watered, God, I've danced, I've shouted, I'm faithful, God, and now I'm reaching through the cloud that has been so thick, it has been so dense, God. I've wandered around this mountain for so long, God. I'm reaching up, God. It is going to change. I'm not going to climb. God, I'm not going in circles anymore. God, I'm going to climb up higher. God, I made up my mind. I'm coming. Lord, I'm climbing into your presence. I don't care what everybody else is doing. Hey, look. Hey, you can dance if you want to. You can shout if you will, but I'm going into the presence of God. Come on, I'm going. I He's calling us up higher. Why are we dealing with the mediocrity of stuff? Because the enemy is want you to deal with mediocrity. So that is where you will stay. Have you ever dealt with something and say, We was parked in the place one night and the neighbor's dog, my Lord God, I prayed God give him laryngitis. <laughs> Never started barking until about nine o'clock. <laughs> but the expectation has got to exceed what you've ever experienced.
Jacob had a, when he had that Jaguar, he said, Daddy, hold on. Some of us here has experienced some great heights and some great lows. And here is why. Because the enemy is trying to take from you. You take those who have walked with God and they walked away from God as high as they've been. That is as low as the enemy is going to carry them right into that demonic realm. Hello, sir, in the green. Come on, wave at me. It's going to break for you. It's really going to break. You've been asking yourself, how do I get through this? How do I get out of this? By the hand of Almighty God. That's how you're going to get out of it. In the name of Jesus Christ. I I thank you this morning, God. I'm asking you, God, to let everything begin to rule in his favor. In the name of Jesus Christ, God, I'm asking you, Lord, will you begin to move, God? In the name of Jesus, I'm asking you, God. Whatever you do, God, and however you do it, God, we know that we are in the will of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, whatever we got to go through to get to there, in in Jesus' name. Hello, sir. Come on, stand to your feet for me, please. Yes, God. Yes, God. The fear, and there has been an insecure spirit, sir, that's been trying to get into your mind and stop you. And I see the Holy Ghost, sir, ripping this thing wide open. I see our confidence. Come on, I see our confidence. In the name of Jesus Christ, I can, I can, I can, I can, I can. I am going to win this battle. Hey, God. Comes a time in your life you gotta tell, hey, hey, stuff, it's time you go park somewhere. It's changing this day, sir. It'll be different when this service is over in the name of Jesus Christ. <laughs> that old sis in the yellow, come on, lift, lift both hands for me. Sis, I see family and family, and there's a stir, and sis, that's coming all the way around within the whole family. In the name of Jesus Christ, sis, I see a boy, and God is dragging that boy out. Come on, he's pulling him out of what he's in. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, sis, you prayed, and you prayed, and you prayed. Mark 16, verse 17, and these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. Why do we have the word of God if we don't believe it? See, I grew up in a day when I, hand, I want a handshake, me and everything. Can I have just a few more minutes? Hello, sis in the brown. Third pew. Come on, stand to your feet for me. Please. Yes, ma'am. You are taking notes. Yes, ma'am. Stand to your feet, please. Come on, sis. Look at me. You can't run with your eyes closed. The folly of yesterday has been trying to attach itself to you and tell you that you're never going to be free of it. Sis, I'm here to tell you that God is burning this off. In the name of Jesus Christ, I do thank you, Lord. There is a self-confidence. I see you standing up. I see you pointing your finger at this whirlwind situation, sis. 
and I see it parting. I see God parting this thing for for you in the name of Jesus Christ, I do thank you, Lord. I see one that is not living for God, and I see the Holy Ghost just shaking him up. Right in the name of Jesus Christ, I do thank you, Lord. Sis, it'll not be much longer right until that dude comes into repentance in the name of Jesus Christ. Keep praying, girl. Come on, keep praying. Keep praying. Keep going. Sis, he's got a heart big as Dallas. He really does. He's got a big heart, but there's a dagger that's been stuck in the very center of of that heart, sis, and now God is going to pull out the dagger, sew up the wound, and of everything that is trying to destroy him, he's going to rejoice over it in the name of Jesus Christ. (laughs) Hallelujah, Jesus. got 1205 okay no, no look I'm standing between you and a biscuit okay I really am hello young man come on stand to your feet for me son you watch what the Holy Ghost does I see you God God I want to get into this I want to invest in this I want to do this God I want to do this God you watch it come on if you won't forget God if you won't forget God son he will bless you beyond in the name of Jesus Christ I do thank you Lord I see an individual that's trying to pull on you, showing that yoke of that pull is going to stop in the name of Jesus Christ. In their words, you are better than their words. You are better than their words, sir, in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on. Come on. You are better than their words. Say it. I'm better than their words. Come on. Tell, tell yourself, I'm better than what they're saying. There has been some that has said, you'll never amount to anything. Prove prove them wrong. Watch what the Holy Ghost does with you. Come on, you watch what he does with you. Come on, brother, come pray for him. Come on, brother, come on, brother, Jay. Sharemando bole si satea mayaro kotore mayan. Hello, sir. You with the red? Come on, lift your hands for me, please, sir. I see you looking at. Come on, I see you looking at some credentials. I see you looking at some finances, sir. And I see you coming down, God, what about this, 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 this. There's about four to six different things, sir. The Holy Ghost is going, is going to begin to straighten this out and straighten this out and straighten this out and straighten this out. In the name of Jesus Christ, I do thank you, Lord. Sir, there is a healing. There is a healing that is coming in front of your lungs and is coming behind your lungs. In the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you this morning. God, you speak. Speak the word, God. Can you imagine Elijah when he took the mantle or Elisha and he took the mantle and he walked back to the water and it parted. God told Moses, what's in your hand? Rod of God. Go back to Exodus 15 and look at what the Lord told Moses. 
He said, Where, a work for Christ thou unto me, you parted. We have the authority in our hand. But he's waiting for you to speak to your own situation. The reason why we hadn't done it yet is because that we, we have felt like that it's not going to work. I'm sorry, it's going to work. The expectation of what you say is about to blow your mind. Hello, sis in the orange. Come on, you come on, sound orange mauve. Yeah, yes, ma'am. Praise God. My wife said I'm colorblind. Okay, I, I call, stay with me. Okay, I'm just country. I don't know. I don't know how else to be. Okay, I pray. I, I, we prayed for a lady one time in in a Hammond, Louisiana, and she had this turban on her head, and and I said, Hello, sis. You, you with the do rag? My wife said, My God, honey, that's a turban. I said. Well, to me, it was, hey, I, 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 I just, come on. Come on, but she left healed. Come on, she left healed. That's all that matters, ain't it? It's going to move in such a way. There's a spirit, and the thing has been compassion your house just like this. It's trying to cause fear and fear and fear and fear. And it's trying to keep you up and it's trying to destroy your rest and it's trying to tell you, I'm going to do this to your family. I'm going to do this to you. I'm going to do this to your children. Do you think that Satan would have told Job that he was going to take his children? I don't think so. The things that he's telling you, sis, that, that he's going to do, he don't have permission to do. That is a lie from the pits of hell. That is why he's coming at you because he wants you to quit praying. Since there is a spirit of intercession in you that is unbelievable and it's time to unlock the door and let it out in the name of Jesus Christ. I thank you, Lord. In a day of three, in a day of three, get you some oil, bring it to the house of God. You let the man of God anoint that oil and you go pour it on the four corners of your property. Come on and take dominion over that property. Sis, and that spirit will not come on that property no more in the name of Jesus Christ. I thank you, Lord. Somebody come to the music, please. Hello, sir, you got the baby, the black and white baby, the black and white girl in the dress. Come on, the black and white dress. Lift your hand for me, please. In the name of Jesus Christ. You, sir, you're doubting yourself over something that God's done give you favor with. He's done give you favor. Now walk in it. I see a certain position, sir. I see a certain position in a certain place, and God's just going to do this. He's going to raise it up in the name of Jesus Christ. And the Holy Ghost sir, is going to give you that position. You watch what Jesus Christ does. Hallelujah, God. I see the finances coming a third and a third and a third in the name of Jesus Christ. I do thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. I praise you today, God. Hello, sis, come on, stand your, you in the black shirt, come on, stand your feet for me, please. In not many more days, not many more days, under, please understand what I'm saying, not many more days, things just gonna be stamped clean. Now, 
I can see the Holy Ghost coming into the side, coming into your left side and coming all the way across your liver, sis. And as he's coming across the liver, everywhere he's wiping with his hand, there's life and there's life and there's life and there's life. In the name of Jesus Christ, I do thank you, Lord. I praise you today, O God. Coming down through your spleen and not both kidneys, but one kidney says coming down through your right hand side. The, the Holy Ghost is going to touch that kidney says, and it's going to open up right. It's going to flow right. Everything is going to work just right. In the name of G Jesus Christ, I do thank you, Lord. I keep seeing a certain individual you've been praying for over and over. God. Excuse me, God win, God win, God win. When are they coming into the house of God? When is he going to move? When is he going to move? When is he going to move? See, it's very shortly, very shortly. God is putting a hook in his jaw, and he can't run no more. In the name of G Jesus Christ, I do thank you, Lord. Come on, sis, he's turning. Come on, stand with me. Come on, stand with me. When you expect him, when there's such an, such an anticipation and an expectation inside of you. Something that is so very phenomenal really begins to take place. You know, you can start smiling at people and it's not long, it's very contagious. I look at it this way. Show us where your teeth are. Show us where they used to be. Don't matter. But it's something that's so contagious. We was coming down the road and I love Hershey's chocolate. Oh my God. And a cup of coffee. Don't get no better. And this little girl I looked at the, beside her and she was going, chocolate? I take a bite. Get to the next red light. She was looking at me like, I take another bite. Before they got to the next red light, mama was pulling in the store. Because what I had put such a craving on her that she wasn't going to quit screaming until she got it. The expectation that is in you is beyond anything that you have ever seen. You need the Holy Ghost? Expect it when you come to the altar. You need the miracle? Expect it when you come to the altar. Whatever you need this morning, whatever's happened in your life, you can expect him to do the healing. Healing is a process of time. A miracle is something that's so spontaneous. But whatever you need, here's an altar. Jesus, I've just got to repair something between me and you. Help me today. God, I'm laying everything down. There's some here within the sound of my voice you have wrestled with you. Jacob had to wrestle with Jacob until his name was changed. You are no longer Jacob, you're Israel. Come on, come on, you gotta expect it. You got to expect it. The woman that had the issue went, and when she touched him, she knew within herself that she was healed. You got to know without a shadow of a doubt that God is going to meet whatever you lay on this altar this morning. Jesus, oh Jesus, oh Jesus. Some of you in here, you come from far and you come from near. And here is what the Lord is doing in your life. 
God has took the things that has been a detriment to you. He's took the things that's tried to stop you and he's turned them around and he's made them stepping stones to get into the presence of his glory. Today, Jesus, it changes. The expectation that you have, let it be great. Come on, let's pray. Reach over and make a connection. You can pray for somebody. Reach over and make a connection with somebody. If you're not praying for somebody, just reach over. Come on, just reach over. We are stronger. We are stronger whenever we make that connection. Jesus. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Today, 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 today. It's going to change. Hallelujah. I thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's pray. 